Welcome to How to Solve the X-Cube tutorial part 3, the third and final tutorial in the How to Solve the X-Cube series. My name is Dane. In the last video, I showed you how to get this 3x3x5 block solved on the X-Cube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to finish the X-Cube, finish these last two layers, and we're going to do this in two steps. We're going to solve one layer and then the other. Um, the first thing we're going to do is, uh, well, we're going to work on this blue layer. We're going to solve this blue layer. We know it's blue because it has a blue centerpiece, and we want to get the all the blue edges and corners around this centerpiece permuted correctly with respect to one another. That means all of the colors on the side are going to match up. And to do this, we're going to use three different moves. We're going to use, we're going to turn this layer, we're going to turn the green layer, and we're going to turn this right layer 180 degrees in order to flip pieces between the two layers. Okay, so we're going to follow the same strategy that we did in the other videos. Uh, we're going to match up corners to edges, and then we're going to place them in the correct layer. So what, here's what I mean. Let's take this blue, uh, this blue corner piece. It is blue, orange, and white. That means it goes next to a blue and orange piece right here, and a blue and white piece right here. The blue and white piece is right here. It should be over here, so we'll have to move it. Uh, what we want to do is we want to find, let's start by matching this piece up to the blue and orange piece. The blue and orange piece I see is right down here. So the first step is we want to make sure that the edge piece and the, the edge piece and the corner piece are on opposite layers, which they are, so that's good. Now we want to place the edge piece in one of two locations, either in this location or in this location. That means we want to rotate it here. So we don't want it here or here. That's because we're then going to put the corner piece in this right layer so that we can bring it down into this other layer so that it matches up with it. Now I see that I put the edge piece in the wrong location because it didn't match up with it. So what I can do is I can flip it around to the other side and when I bring over this corner piece, it matches up properly. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this 1x2 block completely in the right layer so I can bring it up to the other side. Great. Now what I want to do is I want to get this, uh, I, want to, I want to fill in this piece right here, a, the blue and white piece right there, which I see is over here. So what I can do is I can, I want to move this, uh, this blue, this block that I just made without breaking it up, I want to move it back to the other side. So now they're opposite one another. I can now rotate the, the edge piece to the other side we're doing pretty much the same thing. We're keeping, we're moving the edge piece either to here or here and not in the side locations. And then when I bring this corner piece back, it matches up and we have a 2x2 two two block. Now we're going to expand this 2x2 two two block into a 2x3 two block. Let's real quick move this 2x2 two two block out of the right half plane so we can move it without breaking it up. So we either want to grow this 2x2 two two block either here or here. We want to, we want to expand it this way. Let's, um, let's find that other uh, blue and white corner piece that has to go right there. It's right here. And that's going to go next to a blue and red corner piece, which is right here. So here's what I want to do. Let's get the corner and the edge on opposite sides. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the corner piece over to the right layer and move it up to the top. So now it's out of the way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the edge into one of these two locations. I'm pretty sure it's going to be here. So that when I bring this corner piece back, it's going to match up. Now what I can do is I can move the 1 by 2 block into the right plane. Now what I can do is I can twist this top so that when I bring this piece back up, it ends up in the correct place. Now I had to twist it because if I didn't, then it would end up over here, and that's not where we want it. We want to twist this layer so that when we bring this white piece up, this white piece also matches up to this edge piece. Great. Now we want to move this 2x3 block out of the way, and we want to fix this center piece. We want to make sure it's all yellow, just to be safe. Okay, the next step is to create a 1x3 block. We want to match up both corners to the edge, and then we want to place the entire 1x3 bar in the top layer to complete the layer. So what I'm going to do 
I want to bring this edge piece down to this layer. I'm having some good luck having uh, having the edge piece on the bottom and matching up the corners to it. So now that I've I've got this edge piece down here, and I see I've got a corner on the opposite side, so I probably want to match up this corner to this edge. I want to move this edge into one of those two locations, either top or bottom, not left or right, top or bottom. And uh, I see that when I bring this corner back around, it's going to match up to that edge piece. That's great. Now what I have is I've got a corner right here, and I want to match up this corner to this edge uh, on the other side. So what I can do is I can flip the edge around and then bring the corner down to meet it. Now that was a, that was a rather easy case to do. Sometimes it's not always so simple. Sometimes you'll end up with, uh, with something like this. And uh, no matter how much you want to bring this corner down, it's not really going to like match up to that edge. Or maybe you try to do it like this and like this, but then you end up breaking up this 2 by 3 block, and you don't want that. So what you have to do here is you just kind of have to move this corner piece around a little bit using this bottom layer. You have to, you have to spin that corner piece a little bit so that it's oriented properly. And so here's a way to do that. I like to get this corner piece opposite this other corner piece, rotate it so that when I rotate this piece back, um, see how I have a blue and yellow here and I want a blue and yellow? Now I can bring this back up. Now I can put this edge piece back. I can bring the corner piece back. And that's great. And now I've got a one by three bar. Now, now I just want to place the bar. Now real quick, you have to be careful. If you ended up like this, where you have a bar on the bottom, you can't just uh, you can't just throw it up like that, or else you'll end up with an incomplete inside. You have to make sure that before you put it up into the layer, that you have uh, a a opposite colored bar in there. So you have to have it opposite. Then you rotate your one by three bar in. Then you can put it up into the other layer, and then you have a complete blue layer. Finally, we want to come to the last layer. The last layer I complete in two steps. First, I solve the corners. I get all the corners in the correct location. It'll look like this. See how the corners are in the correct location, but the edges aren't. And then I solve the edges to be in the correct location. First thing is the corners. For the corners, there are always going to be two corners, only two, that need to change places. This is what I mean. These two, this corner needs to be over here, and this corner needs to be over here. These corners are in the right place, and at least with respect to one another they are. Even if I have it rotated over here, they're still correctly oriented with respect to one another, but these two need to change places. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the two corners that are correctly permuted with respect to one another. I'm going to hold them in front of me. Sometimes you're going to have diagonal corners that need to switch, and if that's the case, don't worry about where you have the two correct corners placed. But if you have it so that two back cor that two corners need to be switched that are adjacent and not diagonal, adjacent, put them in the back, hold the cube like this, put them in the back with the two corners in front of you, and then you're going to execute this algorithm. Now for this algorithm, I suggest that you keep an eye on the blue side because it makes it a little easier to follow. Okay, so with the two correct corners in front of you and the ones that need to switch places in back, execute this algorithm. Right up, top to the right. Left up, top to the left. Right down, top twice. Left down, top again to the right. Left up, top twice, left down. Okay, what that's done is it moved some corners around up on the top layer, and it's messed up our shape a little bit, but we'll put it back. What we're going to do is we're going to look for the two corners that are correctly permuted with respect to one another. That's these two. They're in the back. And we're going to put those two corners, the correct corners, in the right half plane now. We're going to put them over here with the two that need to switch right here. If you had diagonal corners, you're just going to need to turn this top layer twice instead of once. You, you, you will still want the two correct corners in the right half plane. That's the only difference. Now we're just going to execute the exact same algorithm. Remember to keep an eye on the blue layer. It makes it a little easier. So, right up, top to the right, left up, top to the left, right down, top twice, 
left down, top again to the right, left up, top twice, left down. Perfect. Okay, now we're on to solving the edges. For, for the edges, there are only two algorithms that you need to be able to move all the edges around. Now, there are, it's a little confusing to how to get these, but I'll try to do my best to explain it. Um, sometimes you'll have four edges that all the edges will be like arranged and swapped around. Sometimes you'll have only two that need to be swapped around, and sometimes it'll be weird. Um, this is the most basic case when there are only three. If you have four, I suggest you just try this algorithm a couple times until you get to three edges that need to be switched around or just two edges that need to be switched around. For this case, for the three edges that need to be switched around, I see that the pieces need to go in a counterclockwise direction. The, this piece needs to come over here, this green and orange piece needs to go to the back, and this green and yellow piece needs to go to this side. Now I, I, I note that I have put all of the pieces that need to switch places on the left side and I've got a complete bar on the right. That's deliberate. You want to do that. Arrange it so that all three pieces that need to switch places are on the left side and the correct pieces on the right. Okay, I see that I need to go counterclockwise, counterclockwise. So that's important for, for executing this algorithm. Here's the algorithm. Keep an eye on the blue again. It'll once again make things easier. So I know I've got to go counterclockwise. So I'm going to bring my right layer up. And then I'm going to go clockwise. I'm going to go the opposite direction of whichever way my pieces needed to go. Is that correct? I'm just making sure. So I need to bring it this way. So yeah, I need to go clockwise. Yep. Now I'm going to bring my front, front down, keep an eye on the blue, and my back down. I'm going to spin the right layer twice, flipping these two bars around, bring the front back up, the back back up, I'm going to place my blue bar over in the right half side, and then bring it down twice. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin this top layer, I'm going to arrange these pieces, I'm going to find my solved bar and put it on the left side now. I've got a solved bar here and the three pieces that need to move around are now on the right. Now I'm going to do the same algorithm, but if I rotate it, since I rotated, oh, which way did I rotate? Did I, I'm going to rotate the other way that I did before. So I'm going to rotate counterclockwise this time. I rotated, rotated clockwise on the first go. I'm going to rotate counterclockwise on this go. So counterclockwise top motion. Front, back, spin the right twice, front back up, back back up, move the right bar over to the right side, and put it back down. And yeah, that'll solve the X cube right there. Now there's another case that you're going to encounter when only two pieces are switched around, and it'll look like this. It may look like this. There's two cases where two edge pieces are switched around. But yeah, here's a case where two edge pieces are switched around. If you ever have two edge pieces that need to be switched around, you can always execute this algorithm but you're just gonna. But if it's say maybe this piece and this piece that need to be switched, uh, this algorithm only switches opposite edge pieces. So still perform it. If you have these two that need to be switched around, do this algorithm. But you're gonna need to follow it up with the algorithm that I just showed you that moves three edge pieces around. That's the kind of the tricky part of doing all the edges. Is you kind of need to experiment with it and find out you know, how does this all go together and what's going to make this thing work. But you can always do it with the two algorithms that I showed you. Okay, so if I want to flip these two, switch these two pieces, I'm going to execute this algorithm. Right, top two. 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 It's the same thing five times. That's it. That's how you solve the X cube. Uh, it's only two algorithms at the end, uh, a third one for the corners, and uh, I hope that was informative. Please leave any comments or questions for me in the comments section below, and I will try to address them. Thanks for watching.